So I'm Thomas Groendijk. I'm an education MP from the Netherlands. I live in the Netherlands, uh, in Rotterdam. Um, I'm a consultant at Motion 10. Com Motion 10 is a company uh, that is specialized in BizTalk, SharePoint, and BI. I write a lot of blog posts about BizTalk and ESB Toolkit. So what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to talk about API management. Uh, Kent already showed you a lot about API management. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose, um, or I'm creating an Azure API app. I'm storing data in a SQL Azure database. And um, in front of that, I'm using API management. And in the second uh, part of the presentation, I'm going to use BizTalk and ESB Toolkit to get the data from Azure um, and using itineraries to process uh, the order information. And when an error occurs, I'm going to use BizTalk um, the BizTalk 360 ESB uh, portal um, for the messages. So, this is also a familiar slide. Ken showed you this slide. Um, what I'm going to talk about is new channels. And new channels is, um, for example, when you have a company, they're already uh, running processes on premise. And um, so they're already doing integration. But for them, is APIs are maybe a new way for making revenue alongside their existing business. So what I'm trying, or what I've done, is that um, I've created a demo bar about an imaginary uh, company. Uh, and the company um, <coughs> uh, processes um, orders, or has uh, an order um, application. And, um, <laughs> sorry. And they're, you know, they want to use an API for their business, you know, to expose it to other customers so that they can use it. So this is the demo I'm going to do today. Um, so on premise, you have the ESB, um, this talk, you know, uh, itineraries. It, in this case, I'm using the ESB toolkit, but you can also use normal BizTalk. Doesn't really matter. But they want to expose their their services to the cloud. So what I've done is um, I created an extra API, um, and in front of that, API management. And the data I'm storing in, in a SQL database. Well, it can be anything. It can be a database. Um, you can also use Service Bus. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I'm using a database. So yeah, this is also a familiar slide. Can't. Um, yeah, talked about, uh, about the slide, you know, what is uh, um, API management. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm focusing on the develop developer portal, because in a developer portal, um, you know, the developer can you know, see what the API is, he, he can see the operations, um, you can see uh, the code, how to call the API. And what I've done, I've created uh, an interactive demo, so um, you can register, um, you can go to the URL, you can register, um, and you can also call the API. Um, maybe it's going to take a while because first you have to get a demo, or you have to get a, an email, and then you have to register. <coughs> so this is the demo I'm going to do. Um, first, I'm going to show you how you can create an API. Um, then I'm going to use SQL's, uh, the database to store uh, the, the data in. And then I'm going to uh, call the API from the developer portal. And in this case, I am, um, I'm, I'm storing or I'm processing several computer orders. So I'm having desktop orders, laptop orders, uh, and tablet orders. So what you're seeing here is uh, an API app. Well, you've seen it before, so it doesn't, it isn't really uh, different uh, as the others. But what I'm showing you is um, a custom API app, what I've created. So what I've created is two methods. So you can get uh, uh, an order, information from order, and you can also store an order. So when you create an, a custom API, uh, you use a controller. Um, and you also have to use a model. So with the model, that is uh, the data, what you have to store in. So in this case, uh, this is the data I'm going to use. Um, so this, these data have to go into the model. Uh, let me go back to the controller. So 
So here um, I'm using a class to store uh, the data into the database. So when I, and this is, this is old fashioned. What I'm using here is a, a data access layer. Um, so nowadays, um, yeah, you can also see injection, you know, but what you're seeing here is a normal code, but you also see when you put it in on premise. So when you use SQL Server on premise, you also use this code, and now we're using the code to sort in Azure SQL database. Well, it's exactly the same. Only the connection string is different, but you can also use, um, you know, all the objects what you normally use. So when I'm going to call, or sorry, when you execute uh, an Azure API app, you can also execute it on-premise. So when you're developing, um, you know, in your local environment, um, you, you can execute uh, your, your local API. And what we have seen before is now I'm going to use Swagger. So Swagger is, um, you know, it's out of the box when you uh, call your custom uh, API. <coughs> so in this case, um, I have a get, and I also have a post. Well, I saw that an old colleague of mine is now living in, uh, in Australia, uh, already, um, you know, created an order. So this is the ID that he, uh, from the order. So let's see if it's going to work. <coughs> and, well, it's also important that you uh, put in the, <laughs> the cable. <laughs> So, let's go back. Yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry. Let's see if it's going to work. Just now. So we're back here, we're going to use Swagger. Second time it always works. Huh? So here you have Rene Blauers. So we already stored an order because I uh, enabled the um, developer portal. So from the developer portal, you already uh, store the order. So and here you see that uh, the order status, uh, that's something that, uh, that came back, is still open because I'm not, what I'm going to do in the second demo, I'm going to process the, the order uh, on premise. So this is only uh, the cloud uh, part. Uh, so now it's still open, uh, the order. <coughs> So it's also very easy to deploy your order to the cloud. <coughs> so you can use publish. Um, you can enter the data, so where you want to publish it to. Um, and then you can also, when you click here, now you have the option to also create an Azure API app. So I already done that, so um, I don't have to do that anymore. So let's see how the, the API app uh, runs in the cloud. So in the preview portal, you can see uh, the API app. And let's see my order app. So sometimes it's gonna take a while. So in this case, I deploy the app. So we have several uh, tiers where you can de deploy the app. And in this case, um, you have the free tier. Yeah, so you have several pricing tiers. So you have the free tier, uh, and, I, and I saw that the performance wasn't that well, so I deployed it to the basic tier. And what you're seeing here is that the basic tier one has one core and only, uh, well, not that much uh, uh, memory. So I have to deploy it to another tier because um, it used too much memory. And let me see if you can see it also here as well. So here we see the memory what it takes. It takes now 40 percent of the memory and when it was in tier one it took uh, about 80 and yeah that's too much for your tier uh, for your uh, API 
So in this case, we're good. And this is the nice thing about Azure. Um, if you think it's, uh, if you think, yeah, well, it takes too much memory or the, the performance isn't that well, well, you can you can do all the other tiers. Well, premium is a little bit uh, expensive, so <laughs> first uh, look at the at the other tiers. Okay, um, so I stored the data in uh, SQL Azure database. So now I have let's have a look at uh, at SQL Azure database <coughs> because it's really easier easy to create a, a database in SQL Azure. Um, well, it's just um, you only have to um, create it in a portal and it uh, is, is provisions. So let's see if it's gonna work. So what I've done is I've created the database and here you have several pricing tiers, and in this case, I'm using the standard pricing tier. Um, and here they use um, DTUs to, for measurements. So they call, they're, they're, what they're doing is that they're saying, okay, we don't uh, have um, normal, but we have a sort of a blended measurement. And let me hope if I can show you that part. So here you have the DTU percentage. Um, so this is also a monitoring, so how, you, um, how it runs. On this case, because it's in the standard tier, um, well, it's only CPU percentage in 0 0.3, so that's really, uh, you know, he has really enough memory and uh, performance. And also the nice thing about um, the portal is that you can also create alerts. So for example, if your CPU is above 70%, um, you can create an alert from, yeah, email me. Now, in this case, it, uh, it never happened because it's somewhere like uh, 1%, so uh, I never get an email for the database. And also, also, the nice thing is really easy when you have to scale to another tier. Um, it only takes a few minutes, so um, it's also good to go. So, um, API management. So the other thing is that uh, in front of, so what I've done is I've created my API, I'm storing the data in Azure SQL database, and now I want to put something in front of it to manage it. So I'm using API management, and in API management, you, you cannot use it um, in a preview portal, you have to go to the full portal. So now I, go, I went to the, uh, to, the, to the portal. Well, I can't already show you uh, most part of, um, <clears throat> of API management, so I'm not gonna focus on how you're gonna create uh, API. So um, the nice thing is because I'm having Swagger now, I'm also to, uh, I'm able to import it. So that's a nice thing about API management. Uh, it has a feature to import an API. Um, and I had an API, I created an API app, so for me it was very easy. I imported the Swagger. Um, so I didn't have to create manually um, the API and the operations anymore. <coughs> so in this presentation, I'm going to focus on the developer portal. And there are several um, things what you can do with the developer portal. You can customize it for your own needs. So um, because the portal out of the box is a little bit, you know, Oh, it's not that nice. Um, and what they have is because it's, it's based on a content management system, uh, they have widgets, and you can, you can customize them. So what I've done is a very, well, small change. I've created or I used a, a custom header. Uh, so in this case, I have my own picture um, you know, from, our, from our company. I put it in the header, and then you know, your, your portal seems uh, is now different. Um, so you, you can customize it to your own needs. Um, above, you here you have um, the URL for the developer portal. So a, a developer can go to developer portal. And once a developer is registered, so um, if you register yourself, you, uh, you can go to the portal um, <coughs> and you can use the API apps. So, in this, um, so now we're seeing the order app uh, I've created. Um, <coughs> and when you click on the app, you have the operations. And these are the, the same operations that I, that I, uh, 
that I created. Um, so now in front of it, and now what you're also seeing is that you have the, the code examples. So for example here, um, <clears throat> this is how you can call it in, uh, in SQL, or, sorry, in, uh, in C sharp. Uh, so if you want to call it in C sharp, um, you only have to copy the code and, uh, and you're good to go. And also a nice feature is that you have the, the console. So now you are able to call it from the console. Um, automatically a subscription key is added. So the API that I've created is very easy. Uh, it doesn't have any um, <coughs> well um, extra things on it. You know, it's very basic, very simple. And here automatically a subscription key is added. Um, so if you don't have security, you know, uh, API management can do that for you. So again, um, for the get, you know, I can, um, it's the same, I can get uh, with the same ID. So again, I have here my old colleague, um, Rene. Um, <clears throat> and I can also post my own custom uh, order. So let me, and I already prepared an order. So it's, so I have here a little piece of uh, JSON, um, and this is uh, what I have to post, uh, I'm going to post um, to the API. And what I'm doing here is I already created an error. So for my second demo, I'm going to try to, to process um, this order. And because uh, I'm validating the, the message, uh, it's going to fail. So I'm not already thinking, hey, there's an error in my demo, it's, it's on purpose. Uh, okay. So I can do a post. Well, I get a 200 back. Uh, here's my ID, it's uh, 2019. Um, you can see what the performance is. It's well, 300 milliseconds and what you're seeing is that when you do a lot of calls, uh, it becomes faster. And also what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm um, because what you can also do is I've added a, a trace. So when you add a custom uh, trace header, uh, you're able to trace your, um, <coughs> your call and you're able to see what happens inside uh, um, the API. And in the response you get also the response uh, of the trace. So when you go to this URL, um, you get the, the, the trace result. Well, let's do that. So I'm hitting this. Oh. Something went wrong. Maybe, I, oh yeah. What you, maybe I, I copied too much, eh? Copy too little. Okay. So this is the trace result. Uh, it's one big JSON string. So what you have to do is use a website something like this, you know, to um, so to prettify it. And now you're seeing the result. So in the results, you see the trace result. Um, well, I'm not going to go through this uh, because it's, it's too much, I guess. But the nice thing is you can exactly see, and especially when an error occurs, you, you can use this, you know, to, to see what the error is. <clears throat> and here we're seeing that it's forwarded to the, to the backend service, for example. So here we're going to the API app. Okay, this is the the cloud uh, part. So what I've done, I've created an API, I've putting the data, I'm putting the order in the database, I'm using uh, API management in front of it. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to process this information on premise. Um, <clears throat> because what you see is that often a company already has a process that's running on premise. So um, in this case I'm using the ESB toolkit, you can also use BizTalk, it doesn't uh, really matter. Um, but the nice thing about the ESB toolkit is that uh, you are able to reuse your orchestrations, for example. So um, 
In itinerary, your orchestrations you can use for a specific task. It is not really um, for, for uh, normally when you have an orchestration, it's only for one message type. But if you put your orchestration in an itinerary, um, well, the idea is that you can reuse it for multiple message types. So in this case, I'm having a tracking service that is an orchestration that tracks the message. Um, I have a validating service uh, that validates the message, and when an error occurs, uh, it goes to uh, an error portal. Uh, and also route the service to, uh, for example, uh, the warehouse, uh, and uh, I mail, I'm <coughs> also mailing uh, the service. So when you use the ESB toolkit, um, the ESB toolkit is not really suited for all purposes, but it's more for larger proje uh, projects. So for example, if you have a really large project and you're seeing that, um, that you're doing the same things over, uh, over and over again, then maybe the ESB toolkit uh, can help you because um, well, you, you're able to create now uh, reusable components. <coughs> uh, also, when you want to have no down uh, downtime when you deploy uh, applications, well, maybe the ESB toolkit can help you because with the ESB toolkit, um, your orchestrations are not dependent uh, on schemas anymore. So it's, it, it can be helpful. So in this demo, I'm going to use uh, the ESB Toolkit and BizTalk uh, to process messages from the Azure SQL database. Uh, I'm using itineraries to process the messages. Um, and I'm going also to validate uh, the messages with, custom, uh, with a custom uh, itinerary uh, service. <coughs> and when an error occurs, um, I'm going to uh, valid validate the message in the ESB portal, uh, and we're going to resubmit the message back uh, to BizTalk. First, let me show you um, the receive port. It wasn't enabled yet, so let me first enable it. So now, because I'm enabling this port, it's going to pull data from uh, Azure. And when I click on it, what you're seeing here is uh, the Azure SQL database. Um, well, this is exactly the same as what you're doing uh, on-premise. So only the connection string is different, but um, you can also see that you use a WCF uh, port or adapter when you're using uh, this on-premise. On <coughs> and in this case, I'm, uh, calling, I'm using a store procedure, and when you have the latest uh, service pack or when you have the latest version of the Azure SQL database uh, deployed, it's, it's, uh, you can use the, have the same functionality. So in this case, I'm using the ESB Toolkit. And when you have um, the ESB Toolkit has its own pipeline uh, pipelines. And in this pipeline, uh, I'm using uh, business rules. And I'm using business rules to select the itinerary. <coughs> so let me show you the itineraries. So I have uh, several itineraries deployed. Um, so these are the rules. I've created them in the business rule composer. Um, I have several business, uh, or sorry, several, <laughs> um, several itineraries, and based on the product type, I'm using another itinerary. So when you, for example, have laptops, uh, they're processed by the laptop uh, itinerary, um, and when I'm using, a, uh, when you have a tablet order, they're processed by the tablet uh, itinerary, and with these business rules, you're able to. Um, to call the other itineraries. So let me show you the itineraries, what I've created. <coughs> so these are the itineraries. So, um, Every itiner itinerary service has its own color. Um, for example, blue is in fact a pipeline component um, because underneath is still BizTalk what you're doing. Um, and green is an orchestration. And what you're also able to do is extend the ESB toolkit. Um, so in this case, it's a custom um, uh, component what I've created or a custom itinerary service. And um, yeah, you're able to also to give it your own color. And with this, uh, I'm validating the, the message. <coughs> and here, I'm also using business rules. So when you look at the itinerary service, I'm using your business rules 
um, to validate the message. <coughs> and let me see. So what you're seeing here is the policy I'm using. <coughs> so let me go back to the business rule composer and um, go to the validation part. So these are some validations I've created. Um, for example, so if you have a desktop order um, and the brand is not in, these, in this list, uh, it, doesn't, uh, it gives an error message. And it's just you know, to, to show yeah, what you can do with, with your own business rules uh, to validate the message. <coughs> so if an order is processed, it's going to be validated. And uh, well, let's see um, if we can get my, uh, or what is done with my, uh, because I thought I had 2019. So maybe let's go back to the portal. Or are we here? Yeah, I had to. So let's uh, have a look what the status is. Because probably it's now processed by the, um, by the itinerary. Well, here we see that the status is still open. So it's not really processed. So it doesn't pull it yet. Um, well, we have to go forward. Uh, I, I don't think we have a lot of time to, uh, to see what's done now. But the idea is that, um, so when, you, uh, when it validates it, um, and their network occurs, it, it, it goes to uh, the USB portal from uh, BizTalk 360. So let's have a look at BizTalk 360. <coughs> So what they have done, they have implemented the ESB portal, which you normally, um, you know, normally it's, it's not that much what, the, what is deployed with the ESB toolkit. It's a sample. But what, uh, <coughs> so what BISO 360 has done, they have uh, implemented uh, the ESB portal um, in BISO 360. So now uh, you're also able to, um, for the ESB exceptions, uh, you know, to process them there here. So here are the, the, error that, um, the errors that occurred. Well, for example, I can take one here. Or here we have a validation error. So here, for example, we have a validation error. And it says, well, let's go back to the, to the error. Well, this is an error that has occurred. Or maybe I have to click on that. So, exception details. So we don't sell this brand. So this error is a custom error that I've created with my own itinerary service. Uh, I validated um, the message, um, and because the brand wasn't, um, <coughs> because this brand was not uh, in the list, um, it created a custom exception, and the message is is went to the to the ESB portal. And what I'm now able to do with the ESB portal um, is have a look at the message. Well, here, for example, I have. Um, uh, Microsoft, so this is this is not correctly processed. So I'm now able to to change um, the message. So I can create. Yeah, I can here. I can say micro, and I have to type it correct. Yeah? And I can resubmit the message back to the portal. It's it resubmitted now, uh, and it's now um, again processed. And everything goes well. It goes back to um, <clears throat> back to the cloud, uh, and the status uh, comes from when an error occurs. Um, it comes from uh, that it's processed. So then the, the circle is uh, you have a full circle. Um, it goes back to the to the portal, and um, well, the developer can see uh, the new status. Well, that was uh, my uh, demo. And my presentation. <laughs>